Hey everyone, Dan Willis here. I wanted to talk to you guys today about pottery tools and some of the tools that you're going to typically use in a pottery studio. Now, I'm coming to you right now from a virtual classroom where we're having to teach remotely and we're having to send supplies home. Now, oftentimes, tools themselves can be kind of expensive and so it's hard to send a large number of tools home and so what I want to do is I want to talk about what are the common tools that you use and what are some possible alternatives to using uh, tools that you can find at home or maybe find at a thrift store or other things that you would never even think are pottery tools so let's take a look so some of the most common pottery tools that you're going to find are um, these right here. <clears throat> Probably one of the ones I use the most is uh, this tool right here. It's called a pin tool. Some call it a needle tool. And basically it's just a really pointy little uh, piece of metal at the end of a handle. Sometimes it's wood, sometimes it's metal. And this is used for cutting clay. Um, you're gonna use this a lot on the pottery wheel. You're gonna use this a lot with hand building. And so this is a very important tool. Now, one of the things that you need this for is for cutting clay. So um, one of the things I want you to think about are what are some alternatives that you could use other than a pin tool that you could find around the house? There's a lot of things that you could use. So take a second and think about what are the things that you could use instead of a pin tool for cutting clay. The next one I wanna look at, there's a couple different varieties of this, and these are trim tools. Now, trim tools are used for cutting and removing clay from your pottery. Now, um, this is probably most often used when you are working on the wheel during the trimming process, but these can also be used for hand building and for sculpting and are often used. These are really good tools for removing clay and can add really great textures and, um, and you can do a lot with them. <clears throat> now, typically you're gonna have kind of a larger size trim tool that can come in a variety of shapes and sizes. And then you have a smaller uh, trim tool that will usually have something on each end. I like the ones that have a round edge and a flat edge. And these work really well. It gives you uh, a lot of variety of different ways you can do it. You can use the round edge for cutting more of a, a rounded texture. And this one you could cut it flat or you could use the corners to cut really small areas off of this. <clears throat> now, these are also things that if you send them out in mass quantities to students at home, uh, it's really expensive. And especially if you're starting off the school year and you haven't had an opportunity to order supplies, they might be backlogged with a ton of orders from your supplier and you might not get them in time. So what you wanna do is think about what are some alternatives for using a trim tool? And so that's something I want you to think about. What's something at home you could use instead of a trim tool that could give you a similar effect from removing clay from a, a piece of pottery? So another tool that you're going to use often in pottery is just a wood tool. Now these also come in uh, different varieties of shapes and sizes. Oftentimes what you'll have is a um, side that's pointy and a side that's rounded. And these are used oftentimes again on the wheel for helping to remove clay from the bottom of your piece, uh, to add design to your piece, but these are also very useful in hand building and sculpting because they give you a variety of ways to manipulate the clay with the pointy end and the rounded end. And so um, these are also great tools. Now, this is a, uh, a one that can easily be replicated with things that you can find at home. So take a second and think about what are some of the things you could use at home that could replicate a wood tool that could have a pointy or a rounded end. <clears throat> now another tool that is oftentimes used um, in pottery that's also a wood tool is this tool right here, which is called a rib tool. Now a rib tool is most often used, again, on the wheel for helping to shape the clay as you are forming it um, from a cylinder. And uh, this is a very useful piece for that. But if you're working from home and you're doing primarily hand building and sculpting techniques, uh, this can also still be a very useful tool, mainly because of its variety that is similar to what you'd find with a wood tool, is it has different types of shapes to it. It has a totally flat side and it has the rounded side. 
It also has a very pointy end and it has more of a 90 degree angle on the other side. And so it gives you some options in terms of how you can use this tool for different techniques and different designs and different textures that you might add to your clay. Now the question again here is, what could you possibly use as an alternative to a rib tool at home that could also give you uh, a different variety of ways to manipulate your clay like the rib tool gives you. And then finally, what we have here is a wire tool. This is a brand new one. I'm just opening it up. Um, and when I open this up, what it is, it is a tool that is basically just a wire and oftentimes when you are unpacking these it's like a mind puzzle trying to unwind these because they pop open and then they are just a, a mess of wires altogether so uh, sometimes it takes a little while to uh, unwind these but um, one of the things that you're going to be using these for is just cutting clay. Now, if you are working from home and you are using clay from your home, this is a really handy tool to have just because you're having to cut clay every day from uh, the piece of clay that you received from your instructor. And um, sometimes it can be kind of hard to just use your hand to grab a chunk of clay off of the piece of clay that you received. And so having a wire tool is a really handy tool to have. Also, if you're working on a piece of pottery and you're not working on a surface that is one that repels the stickiness of clay, um, oftentimes your piece will stick to the table or the surface that you're working on and in order to remove it you have to cut it from the table and if you try to use something that's bulky um, it's going to be a big problem and so having a wire tool will be a big help with that so this is basically just a wire with two different handles and you can pull this through the clay and it will cut it really clean so this is a really important tool to have anytime you're working with clay and so once again, what's something that you could use as an alternative to a wire tool that you could easily find at home that would do the same thing of cutting the clay? Now, I have a little bag that I put together for my students that will hopefully make it a little bit easier to work with the clay and hopefully will replace some of the main things you're trying to accomplish with the tools that you'd find in the pottery studio at home. And so one of the things that I am sending home with my students is first of all, I'm sending home uh, a small piece of canvas. Now, the reason you want a small piece of canvas is because, like I said, when you're working with clay, it will typically stick to the surface of the table you're working on. Uh, wood, um, laminate, whatever it may be, it's probably going to stick to the table if you leave it there long enough and you're working on your project. So the canvas will absorb some of that moisture from the clay and keep it from sticking. Now, if you get this canvas soaking wet and work with your clay, it's not going to be able to absorb and it's not gonna be able to repel that clay. So you wanna keep this as dry as possible and that is going to give you the effect that you want of your clay not sticking to the surface that you're working on. Another tool that's very important that uh, you need to have is just a sponge. Just a piece of sponge. Oftentimes you're going to be using water with every project that you have to one level or another. And so having a sponge where you can smooth the clay, you can blend the clay, this is a really important tool to have. So I'm gonna be sending home a sponge to all of my students. Another thing that is really easy and inexpensive that you can use that I'm gonna be sending home is just a piece of fishing line that I tied uh, two little loops on the end. So it gives you kind of like an, a handle you can use and you can use this to cut the clay, and it's inexpensive, it's really durable, and really strong, it's going to get the job done, and do the exact same thing that a wire tool would do uh, without the cost of having to send out uh, who knows how many different wire tools uh, at a time. It's gonna be a big money saver if you do this. And so each student will get a piece of wire, and I, I picked the thickest fishing line that I could find because it will be the most durable in cutting the clay. And it's gonna do exactly the same thing that a normal wire, wire tool would do. Now, one of the things that you're gonna do in um, 
hand building is sometimes you need to flatten out the clay. So I'm sending uh, home just a wooden dowel. It's kind of thin, it's kind of a small wooden dowel, but this is something that you can use both for, uh, as kind of like a wood tool to uh, help uh, add design to your piece. You could use it that the round edges to add some texture to it, but you can also use it as kind of like a rolling tool uh, that you could use to roll out and flatten out your clay. If we're working on the slab technique and you are not very good at the technique of throwing it and stretching it out on a table, or you don't have that type of space to stretch out the clay on the table, you might have to use your canvas and use a dowel to help roll out your clay to flatten it out to the thickness that we need. So this will be a handy tool to have have, they can have multiple different uh, uses to it. Now, one of the things you guys can use that I'm sending home with you are I'm sending home just some pop, thick popsicle sticks. Now, I'm sending these home with you because these can act similar to a wood tool. Now, with the wood tool that you're going to typically use in the pottery studio, it's going to have a pointy edge and a round edge. Now, these obviously have two round edges, but the nice thing about these popsicle sticks are these are, these are easily cut and these are easily sanded. And if you have just a little piece of sandpaper or anything like that, you can cut these and shape the ends so that they are pointy and you can kind of create your own wood tool with your own type of design. And I sent you home too so you can do some different options and create your different types of uh, tools. Now these aren't going to last as long as a nice uh, wood tool that you'd have in the pottery studio. So these are, these are things that you could easily find at any craft store, at any Walmart, at any type of store that sells craft supplies and they're dirt cheap. Uh, to get these. Also, I'm always happy to supply more if you need more uh, for my students. Now, the other things I, I'm sending home with all of my students is I'm just sending home uh, a selection of different um, kebab sticks. Um, these are going to act like pin tools and um, they can also act as carving tools as well. Um, so I'm sending home two large ones I'm sending home two medium-sized ones, and I'm sending home two small ones like this. Now, um, these are gonna work really well for adding design, for, um, for cutting the clay, and it's also gonna work really well for slipping and scoring. Um, something else that you could use that you probably have in your home for slipping and scoring is uh, a fork, whether it's a plastic fork or a metal fork, those work great in a pinch for slipping and scoring. I'd highly recommend if you have a fork that uh, your family doesn't mind you uh, getting clay on. Um, that would be a great tool to add to your um, your tool supply for when you're working with the clay. Now these are just a few things that I was able to send home uh, that are fairly inexpensive and that you can easily replace if you need more. Um, what I'd like you to think about is what are some other things that you might have around the house that you could use for pottery tools that maybe we haven't thought of. Uh, so think about it. Think about and take a moment to think about what are some of the other things I might have just laying around my house that could actually work as great pottery tools because that'll be a really important thing that we can use and we can add to our uh, tool bag for the for the year as we're working from home and working virtually with the, the pottery supplies and our clay. So um, I hope this helped. I hope this gave you some ideas of some things that you could use as tools as opposed to the tools that you'd find in your pottery studio. So good luck and um, make some great things with the stuff that you have just laying around your house. Mr. Willis signing off.